So our first speaker for the afternoon is Kwejo Twenaboa, who is a, a housing activist. I had a, a little Google stalk of you last night just to see what you've been up to, and uh, there's some very, very impressive things in, in your portfolio. So uh, Kwejo has been basically putting pressure on landlords about unacceptable housing conditions and using digital media to shame them in their making changes. And I think that's awesome. We need more badassery in our sector to drive change. <laughs> So with no further ado, I will hand over to, to Kwejo. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, thank you to Shelter, too, for inviting me um, down today to come and speak to, to everyone. Um, yes, so my name is Kwejo Tonabo, and I'm a social housing or housing campaigner. Um, and I've been doing this for just over a year now, after um, living in poor social housing myself for, for years, many years. Um, and it got to the point where I had had enough. And for those of you that um, don't don't really know me or the work that I do, my story started um, living in poor housing with both my dad and my sisters. Um, and we, were, we had been complaining to our housing provider. We had been trying to get things changed um, for absolutely ages. And then my dad fell ill, so he was diagnosed with stage one terminal esophageal cancer. Uh, he was start diagnosed with stage one esophageal cancer, which progressed quite rapidly over the space of the year to stage four. Um, whilst, so he was really receiving medical treatment um, and being fed through his stomach because he couldn't eat or drink um, in a house that was full of cockroaches, mice, damp, mold, asbestos, and, uh, no kitchen, no, no bathroom. Actually, we did have a kitchen, but the units in the kitchen were nearly 100 years old and completely falling off the walls. Um, and I was having to go to the gym in order to shower. That's how bad things got. And our housing provider was well aware of this um, and did absolutely nothing about it. So I then went to the news um, and, and shamed them that way. And they, their response was, we're sorry, Qua this is after my dad passed away. We're sorry, Quajo feels as though he hasn't received the service he deserved. And that really annoyed me. And it was at that point that I decided to go around all 540 something homes in my estate and do the exact same, went to social media and um, shamed them there too. And then the national news, ITV national news picked it up um, and I haven't looked back since. I've been going around London doing the same. And then since then I have been going around um, the UK uh, and I will continue doing that whilst at uni. Um, and I've got a few videos that I'll show you just to give you an idea of um, what it is that I've been up to. All the stuff in Africa. And on pigs. And the other side, that's pay you, you don't do shit. Last time it was back in 50, 10 days. The second time in two weeks. You don't do any more of your electrics, it's that for you. You don't stay at the party. So that was um, a home in Liverpool, so I went up to Liverpool. Um, this is in Essex, so Carrying Housing Association. This happens to be my housing provider. Um, and this was a new build, actually. This was a new block of flats. I believe they were between five to seven years old. So that was Essex, and then this is another flat in that, in that block. Still on top of it. So multiple members of the flood flood at this point. Um, and then further down, this one's Birmingham. Uh, you know, so if you go to the biggest of where you then cut off. So this was in Birmingham, and I was contacted by. Um, a lady on my oh, her mum. Her mum had had a stroke um, a few years before, was bed bound and also blind. And she was staying in the living room and her, her daughter, an NHS worker. And this was a condition of one of the bedrooms. Um, one of the beds and the whole room is just covered in, in mold. Every single corner, black mold. 
the bed is right there next to the wall, covered in mould. Over here too, you can see this wall completely covered in black mould. Curtains covered. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've literally lost words, and it's rare now that I've become lost words because I've been to so many different homes, but this is just... I don't know, I often think, to, how is things like this even legal? How is it even legal to home people in conditions like this? This is just one bedroom. I'm gonna take you around the rest of the house till we show you different rooms. And every single wall in that house was covered in the same mold. So that was the bathroom, for example. Every single corner of the door. The door, you can even see covered in black mold. There's no windows in here, none whatsoever. Um, the extractor fan doesn't work. There's a pipe here that's burst, and it looks like it's a stack of pipes and sewage. Um, you can, it's just, I mean, it looks like a fire is happening in here. You can see the paper come away from the wall, the tiles. It's, I mean, it's, it's hard to even explain just how shocking this is in real life. I don't know if the camera's going to do it justice, but I'm just in the box. And then, I think finally we will. So this was the kitchen. Actually, that was that was. Um, dash. You can see the door. Uh, you can see, see the ceiling. Even the blinds going on. The extractor fan again doesn't work. Um, I was told by the tenant that this property was built in around the 1950s. Nothing in this kitchen has been changed ever since then. It's the same uh, units that are in here. I have to mention too that uh, the tenant's mum. Um, who is also the tenant, uh, the main tenant, um, is disabled, um, also blind. She had a stroke a few years ago. Um, and she too is in the front room. We're not going to film in there, but she is on her bed and she often gets upset due to the conditions that the family are having to, to live in. And again, the council are aware of this. But she's in a room full of mould and damp, black mould and damp, like all of the other rooms like in here. Um, and they've done absolutely nothing, nothing. That's why I'm a tenant, that's why her mother and daughters had to contact me via social media to come up because they've had no help. And you can just see how, how bad things are. Should it just a dis disgrace. This is why I do what I do because it's just an absolute disgrace that this is happening and no one knows about it. And then finally, I spoke. I spoke with um, the tenant's daughter. I believe, yeah, it's that one. I just asked her how she was always worried about it with your mum. And with your mum too, do you, do you, I'm guessing, always worry about it because your mum had a stroke for years ago yeah. and she's blind. Yeah. And they're aware of this. But... Yeah, it's, it's better now. She yeah. doesn't think she'll live very much longer. Yeah. Because she thinks it's coming up. Yeah. And it's hard for me to hear. Yeah. As a, as a daughter, no, honestly, honestly, don't worry. Um, and you can play to your MP. Uh huh. Could you remind me who's your MP? Um, so that was just an idea of some of the, the homes that I've, um, people that I've worked with. I mean, there was another case in um, Liverpool when I went up a few months ago where there was a disabled man in a tower block having to defecate into plastic bags. For almost a year, once he'd been complaining about his broken toilet, um, unfortunately the housing provider didn't come out until I went there, and then 24 hours later, he had a brand new toilet and, and sink, which shouldn't, it, it just shouldn't be the case. And that's why I do what it is that I do, because there's so many people out there that haven't got the voice, haven't got the platform, haven't got thousands of people following them that they can shame their housing providers, and I just can't help absolutely all of them. So it's down to people with the power, it's down to the housing providers, it's down to the government, it's down to the MPs to prioritise tenants, they should be the, the, the priority. And have the, I've had this conversation time and time again, and this, these ones are in England, in and around England. I mean, the state of housing, not just social housing um, in England at the moment is absolutely appalling. I mean, the bottom line is people are dying in their homes. And I think people imagine that makes, or assume that I'm exaggerating when I say that, but my dad was one of those cases. And I've spoken to tenants with terminal cancer um, multiple people with terminal cancer who were fighting their landlords um, for a decent home or just to be able to live in decent accommodation before they go on to die. They shouldn't have to. It shouldn't be the case. At what point did we get to this? I get it so wrong. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's, gonna, it's not something that will be fixed overnight, but it starts with the fundamental basis of 
housing providers caring. Mm. And that that is um, that is where it where it starts. And I say that time and time again. People ask me, oh, what motivated you in the beginning? Why did you start? Why have you been going on for so long? And the bottom line is, it wasn't for me money. It wasn't for me. Uh, social media platform, being on ITV or BBC, it was the fundamental reason I cared. And unfortunately, I couldn't get my dad out of that situation, but I've made sure, I've gone around the country to, to make sure others aren't having, and if I can help them, get them out of the situations or similar situations to what we were living in, because it's completely inhumane and there's not one person, if I went to Parliament right now and stood up in Parliament and asked any single member of government whether they live in any of these conditions, absolutely all of them would say no. So why do they think it's acceptable for someone from a different social class and social um, social housing to have to, to live in these conditions? The bottom line is they shouldn't. Yeah. They shouldn't. Um, so that's 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 what I do and I've been working with um, the government to, to, to try and create change. And so like the field that's been put through of recent, um, I sat down with them multiple times to, to, to look at that um, and look at key aspects with that and in the beginning it wasn't, it, it, there was nothing in there that I thought would fix the current state of um, social housing. There's been changes made and it's going to take many more changes before things are sorted. Um, but one of the key, and I said, I spoke to, I don't know if everyone in here knows Solitaire, but I spoke to her downstairs uh, not long ago during lunch and um, I mentioned about, so the, the, the UK government are now, or the British government are now, um, using an Ofsted style inspection. I don't know if anyone's seen it here, but it, I suggested it in one of the meetings that they do that because on my estate, which was the East Fields estate in Mitcham, what happened was um, I reported my housing provider to the regulator. I reported my housing provider to the ombudsman on behalf of everyone on that estate. And what happened was I got a response from them saying that they would respond within a couple of months or however long the time frame was. I never got a response. The response that I did receive was via the news and when they announced that um, they, they found no issues at all uh, with what Clarion were, were doing. And then I found out later on that the regulator had spoken to Clarion and Clarion only about what was going on in our estate. Not one social housing tenant was spoken to. So at that point I said, how is that in any way regulated? I mean, you look at education, you look at Ofsted. Ofsted don't just ring up a head teacher and ask them, oh, how are you doing? The head teacher says, oh yeah, we're great, here's an outstanding. They don't do that, they go in and they regulate from top down. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that. So that's one of the changes that's happened. But it's going to be take multiple changes like that to happen for real change to come. But the fundamental and most basic change that needs to happen is social housing providers actually caring and not just putting up on their website that they care or prioritise tenants. Because that's what all of them have done that I've um, highlighted and had to disgrace. They've all said how um, they prioritise tenants, tenants' needs. But then... I go into their home and, and see people having to defecate in their bag for a year because their toilet hasn't been hasn't been fixed. Yet they're they're paying rent. Um, yeah, so I know I'm waffling on a bit, um, but that's that's what I've been doing, and that would be my message: is just to 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 care, to make sure tenants are the priority. I mean, in healthcare, it's patients that are the priority, in schools, it's kids and their needs that are the priority. And um, I had a, I would be, just as final point is um, terminology used. And I've had this conversation with housing associations and councils and even shelter actually um, in around England where they refer to, to tenants as customers and they refer to um, tenants' homes as units. And it's basic things like that that take away like, a human aspect from tenants. Because ultimately customers, if you're not happy with something as a customer, you can go and return it. You can go in give it back, you can go and change it, you can go and exchange it with housing, you can't. In a lot of cases, you're told, this is where you need to go, this is your only option, or you need to move absolute miles away. So they're not really, when you think about it like that, they're not customers, they're tenants. Um, and yes, we have a housing crisis at the moment, a shortage of homes, and that's something that was caused from decades ago. But again, it takes those small changes that will then lead to hopefully bigger changes, and yeah, hopefully that just gives you an idea of what I've been doing. Okay. That was fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I share your passion and I share your despair. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've had my heart ripped out of watching some of those some of those videos. Yeah. At the at the wall some people get really surprised when they say people come up the streets and then they give their keys back. Because yeah. actually it's better out there that you've got some fresh air in. Mm -hmm. 
um, this has to change, this just has to 